very good morning students happy to meet you all in this new topic today's topic is going to be lecture number 14 in your theory farm inventory this topic is also very important in your practical point of view so farm inventory so we have two keywords here first is farm and then is inventory what is farm if you could remember the definition or the concept which we have gone through in theory and practical classes. What is farm? Farm is a piece of land with a fixed boundary where farming activity is carried out as a profession, right? As a business. That is what farm is. So if you want to carry out any activity, you need certain things, certain items, right? For example, in agriculture, in farming, what we need, we need seeds, we need fertilizers, pesticides, you know? We need cash on hand, you know, we need some deposits, we need a tractor, machinery, tools. So we did all these items. So when you are taking account, taking account of all these items, it is called inventory. For any occupation to flourish, for any occupation to continue for a long period of time, we need inventory, right? So in this class, we'll be seeing what is farm inventory, okay? So when we say farm inventory, you see what we are having. Uh, see here, the list is endless. Okay, if you imagine you are sitting in a farmer's uh, field, okay, and then you're going to his house, you're taking a, a list of whatever stock he has got, the stockpile, the number of items. He'll be having cash on hand, right? He'll be having some seeds, he'll be having fertilizers in his go down, in his storage house, he'll be having a farm building for him to keep his harvest. Then he'll be having some time deposits, the money as a fixed deposit or a recurring deposit in a bank or post office, you know? And then uh, he'll be having a tractor, he'll be having fodder, he'll be maintaining uh, cattle, livestock, he'll be having a, a cattle shed, he'll be having land, he'll be having a standing crop. So we'll be seeing all these items. So we can have some classification of these items. We can have the cash on hand as well as the time deposits under Assets, right? All these assets which a farmer owns. So we can call these as cash assets or current monetary assets. As well as we'll be having fertilizers, seeds, you know, farm produce, whatever he has produced, whatever he has harvested that he is going to sell. So all these can be called as assets. What type of assets? Non depreciable assets. Because the farmer is going to consume, that is, utilize the fertilizer immediately in one season. Okay? The farmer is going to sow the seed immediately when the season is going to start. So non-depreciable assets. Then after harvest, whether he's harvesting cotton or wheat or groundnut, he is going to sell that immediately. Again, non-depreciable. So just like we have non-depreciable assets, which do not have time value, we have something called depreciable assets, which the farmer will be using over the time period. For example, tractor, livestock, farm building. So we have depreciable assets. We have non-depreciable assets because the farmer is going to consume or utilize immediately and then we'll be having cash assets or current monetary assets okay so all these items will be present in inventory so we have the physical quantity or physical count and then we have to include some appropriate value to it by some method so that is called as farm inventory now we'll see definition you see what is a farm inventory? It is a complete list of all the physical property of a business that is farming along with their values at a specific date. For example, if you are going today uh, to a farmer's field and then to his house, his farm building, and you're making list of all the items physically, their numbers, and then you are assigning some value to it. That is called as farm inventory. It is a complete list of all the physical items along with their quantity and value. This is called as farm inventory. It is done at a specific date. Why we're doing it? Because when you're doing it in this year, in this agriculture year, let us call it as opening inventory. We are doing it today, and then we are repeating the same procedure after six months or after one year. So we'll, have, we'll be having opening inventory, and then we'll be having closing inventory. So when you're seeing the quantity as well as value of the farm inventory, when it is open, and then when it is closed, you can find the difference. 
if the difference comes to be positive value then you can say the farmer's inventory condition is good right for example let us take in jeu farm or university farm for example we have cotton 200 kg this is the quantity and then we have value 10000 rupees for example the date is 29 february 2016 like that then tractor power tiller ground net cattle land whatever items we have quantity as well as value so this is what is common inventory form inventory is what is a complete list of all the items along with their physical quantities and values at a specific time period okay this is called as form inventory this is the first step in farm financial accounting why because you are seeing it uh, in the beginning of the season and the end of the season or in the beginning of the agriculture year or end of the agricultural year or in the beginning of the financial year or end of the financial year so it's a kind of accounting we are doing it's the first step in accounting then this forms the basis of all the financial statements whether you are saying cash flow statement or you have balance sheet or you have income statement whatever statement that we have learned the basis of all the statements whether it is cash flow or income statement or balance sheet is form inventory without form inventory without making a list along with the value we won't be able to proceed in the farm financial statement so the users this is the first step in farm financial accounting and then it forms the basis for the preparation of all the financial statements right and then use what is the use as i told you when we're taking farm inventory we have opening inventory and closing inventory that is we are doing it in the beginning of the agriculture year and end of the agriculture year when we are doing that we can see whether the value has appreciated or depreciated whether there is profit or loss appreciation means whether the farmer has increased his asset value for example you take cash on hand let us see two periods beginning of the season end of the season at the end of the season whether the cash on hand has increased with the farmer or not or that is appreciation then depreciation whether we are noticing any depreciation in the value of assets or not right then now we know so far what is the farm inventory it is very simple right if you could remember it is nothing but it's a complete list of all the items along with their physical value physical quantities and values at a specific time period it has to be repeated right the repetitive farm inventory analysis will give you whether we have any appreciation or depreciation in the value of the assets or whether there is any profit or loss to the farmer right then procedure what is the procedure we have got how many steps we have got only four steps okay as a procedure for farm inventory the first one is in the beginning of the year we have to prepare the list of all the assets of the farm okay when we are preparing all the list and then we have to categorize how we can categorize current assets or cash assets or current monetary assets then fixed assets or depreciable assets then non depreciable assets current assets or current cash assets mean cash on hand so cash on hand then we have time deposits you know cash on hand means the cash which is readily available to the farmer to meet any emergency situation or to do regular business activity then we have time deposits the <clears throat> amount that the farmer has deposited in the bank or post office as fd or rd so we have time deposits we have cash on hand we can also have shares and all whatever the farmer has got as current cash assets then fixed assets or depreciable assets <clears throat> those assets <clears throat> which the farmer uses for a multiple time period for example tractor land right the farmer will be using year after year so they depreciate they have time value depreciation means what that is the loss <clears throat> or decline in the value of the asset over time period you know right that is depreciation right so we know what is original cost we know what is salvage value we know what is depreciation what is salvage value salvage value is the value that is obtained from any asset at the end of the time period right salvage value so we have depreciation depreciation means depreciation decrease decrease or fall in the value of any asset over the time period like tractor land right and then we have non depreciable assets like seeds fertilizers they won't depreciate right because they won't stand for more than one year 
they'll be used immediately once the farmer is saving seeds from onion or potato why he is saving it because he wants to use it for the next season right so there is no depreciation like tractor and all of they have depreciation because the farmer will be using it for multiple time period here the farmer will be using it immediately or if he is harvesting cotton ground it what the farmer will do he will be storing it for some months and then he will sell it off so there is no depreciation so all these assets are called as non depreciable non depreciable assets so we have only three categories first is cash assets or current monetary assets and then we have fixed assets or depreciable assets and then we have non depreciable assets okay how to prepare just physical counting on a specific date you have to go on a specific date and do physical counting that's it so first step is physical counting what is the um, cash on hand with the farmer how many tractor the farmer has got in the case of livestock how many cattle he has got how many gear cows how many buffaloes seeds what is the quantity of seed that the farmer has got right now what is the you know quantity of fertilizer that the farmer has got in his godown so all those things second valuation of each item using an appropriate valuation method so once you know the physical quantity the second step is valuation right so we have got for example we have got cash on hand we have the value already we have got time deposits we have the value what about seed what about fertilizers how to value it whether we can use market price for the valuation of seed for example let us take farmyard manure the farmer has got farmyard manure which he has produced on his farm on his own if he has produced farmyard manure now then how to value it since the farmer has not purchased from the market how to value it like tractor how to value it because tractor is what that is depreciable asset it will depreciate over the time period how to value it in depreciation we have got three different methods which you have seen straight line method then diminishing balance method then sum of years digits method slm dbm sgm so which method to use which method is appropriate right so there are so many valuation techniques and then we have to repeat step 1 and 2 at the end of the year so beginning of the year we are going we are taking the physical list and then we are valuing same procedure we are, we are repeating it after the end of the year so we have beginning of the year opening farm inventory then end of the year closing inventory or closing farm inventory then what we have to measure the difference opening inventory at the beginning of the year and end of the year so that's it so measure the difference whether the difference is whether net change is positive or negative so opening inventory minus closing inventory whether that is positive or negative if it is positive the farmer is in a good condition if it is negative the farmer is not in a good condition right so that is very important so opening inventory and closing inventory measure the difference so closing inventory minus opening inventory right at the end of the year how far the farmer is placed whether he is placed in a good position or not so difference is between closing inventory minus opening inventory then what are the methods of valuation we have got six different methods first is nsp or net selling price method second one is market price method third is cost method fourth is original cost less depreciation method fifth is replacement cost less depreciation that is minus replacement cost minus depreciation method then income capitalization method net selling price method what is the net selling price when you see net net means what we should find the difference difference of what difference of the selling price minus marketing cost the farmer if he is selling his ground at right in a market yard he'll be facing some marketing cost transportation cost you know to take his produce to the market and then he'll be paying entry fee he'll be paying some commission charges so there are some marketing cost involved and then what is the selling price of the farmer so we have selling price minus marketing cost it gives net selling price so do not take production cost to differ production cost is entirely different here in net selling price method we are taking only the selling price minus marketing cost right then market price method the farmer has purchased seeds fertilizers for the market what is the price that he has given for purchasing fertilizer seeds that is called market price method cost method what is cost method the farmer has produced on his own on his farm farm yard manure he has saved the previous season seeds seed of groundnut or you can take onion potato he has saved so the, he has not purchased in market if the purchase has not happened then what is the cost right so there is the cost method then we have original cost less depreciation method you know for example in tractor in the case of uh, machineries equipments we know about original cost right 
the cost you know at which the machinery was purchased in the first place original cost then depreciation the decline in the value of the asset that is machinery over the time period so when the farmer has purchased machinery on the first time it is called original cost when the machinery like tractor if it passes from one hand to another we don't have original cost we have second hand value third hand value but original cost is when the purchase was made first then what we have is replacement cost you see now we have original cost the cost incurred when the machinery was purchased for the first time or when the asset was purchased for the first time and then we have replacement cost how it is different in replacement cost for example let, let us take very old building very old building for example in order to construct the same building now okay at the present price level and the present level of technology what is the cost that will be incurring that is called replacement cost if we want to construct the same building at the present technology prevailing technology and at the present price level then what is the cost that will be incurred to construct the same old structure this is called as replacement cost original cost is the cost incurred when the asset was purchased for the first time replacement cost is the cost that will be incurring in order to construct the same asset it may be any storage structure with the present price level and the prevailing technology this is called as replacement cost and then we have income capitalization method if an asset is giving you returns over the time period right over the time period it is giving you income if that is the case then how to value it so in that we'll be using income capitalization method so based on the type of asset that the farmer has got that you have listed in your inventory you'll be using all these methods to find out the value right now when to use net selling price method as i told you this is meant for those assets which the farmer has harvested or produced and he is selling within one year for example you see crop produce livestock products and all those things no they are non depreciable assets so the value of non depreciable assets which the farmer has harvested or produced can be determined using net selling price method and what is the formula for it it is the selling price minus marketing cost we know very well if the farmer wants to market his cotton or groundnut he has to take to the market yard and he'll be facing a lot of marketing cost and he'll be ultimately selling it so selling price minus marketing cost will give you net selling price then market price method for the for example the farmer is purchasing seeds fertilizer pesticides from outside outside is farm they are non depreciable but the farmer is purchasing from outside right so this is called as market price method which is used to determine the value of non depreciable assets or input supplies which the farmer has purchased from outside then cost methods so again non depreciable assets we are using it uh, to estimate the current value of farm produced inputs the, the farmer is producing certain inputs on his own okay on his own farm for example farm yard manure compost and standing crop also standing crop the, the farmer has not harvested it so we cannot use net selling price method okay but we can go for cost method if you want to uh, estimate the value of standing crop then you can go for cost method the cost incurred you know so far what are the whatever the cost has incurred for the farmer to have the standing crop that will that will be the cost method so we have seen net selling price method we have seen market price method and we have seen cost method we know very well market price method is for determining the value of inputs that the farmer has purchased from outside and here cost method is to determine the value of inputs or standing crop that the farmer has produced on his own on his own farm right that is farm produced inputs by the farmer and then what we have we have cost minus depreciation method original cost minus depreciation method this is to determine the value of depreciable assets like farm building like machinery equipments livestock tractor you know so we have original cost you know the cost at which the asset was purchased for the first time so we have original cost and then we have to work out depreciation we have seen three different methods of depreciation what are they we have straight line method we have diminishing balance method you know and then we have sum of years digits method right so we have got three different methods 
So we can use any one of these methods and we have to find the depreciation. Depreciation, rate of depreciation per annum. Once you have it, you have original cost and then you have minus depreciation. It will be giving you the cost minus depreciation method. Okay. Oh, okay. Have you seen this temple? This is a, uh, a temple in Karnataka, Vardeshwar Mahadev temple. Okay. For example, if you want to construct the same Gopuram, this is the entrance of the temple. Okay, some 20 story Gopuram. For example, if you want to construct the same, this is very old now, some 1000, 1500, 2000 years. If you want to construct the same structure now at the present level of technology and at the prevailing price, then what would be the cost that will be incurred? Okay, the cost will be huge. We don't know whether we will be able to replicate the same or not. But imagine if you want to do it, then what to do so for any old building okay you see cost of constructing the same type of building at the present price with the present technology is called as replacement cost so replacement cost is nothing but the when you have to construct any old structure using the present level of technology and at the present price level that is called as replacement cost so we should find out what is the replacement cost and then we know we can find out depreciation and our depreciation using the methods which you have seen. So replacement cost minus depreciation will give you the uh, the valuation of old farm buildings. Now you should be telling me what is the difference between original cost and replacement cost. I think this you should be getting now, right? And then lastly, what we have is income capitalization method. Okay, so this method is useful in estimating the value of land. Why land? Because land is an asset which yield income over infinite time period. So if we have some assets, which is going to give us income over infinite time period, okay, that is called as, for example, land. So we can use some method called as income capitalization method, right? Because you won't be able to estimate the depreciation of it, like tractor, like power tiller, where we know depreciation amount, but in land, how to estimate depreciation. So the best way is income capitalization method. The formula is very simple, you see, V equal to I upon R. Where what, what is V? V is the income capitalized value. And what is I? I is the average annual income over a number of years. The farmer has to know, for example, 10 years data is giving us, what is in 10 years, what is the average annual income? For example, first year, second year, third year, first year, 40,000, second year, 80,000, third year, 90,000, whatever. So what is the average annual income over a number of years? Then rate of interest. What is the other method to estimate the value of land? The other method is the selling price, right? If the farmer is ready to sell his land, what the price is going to get? Selling price. So the other method is selling price. If the farmer is not having the uh, annual income over a time period, then we can use selling price of land to estimate the value. Okay, and then we can include income also. So depending upon the uh, use of it, depending upon the type of it, we have to devise certain methods and we have to involve in farm inventory analysis. Okay. So this is, are you saying it? Are you able to see it? So this is the structure of farm inventory. You're seeing it, right? You see what we have, you see here, farm inventory of a hypothetical farm on 1st April, 2019 and 31st March, 2020, right? So we have opening inventory. We have mentioned the date. We have closing inventory. So we are dealing with physical quantities, we have value, and then we have classification of assets, cash assets, depreciable assets, and non-depreciable assets. The assets which will be consumed or utilized within one time period. And then we have depreciable assets, the assets which will be useful for multiple time period. And then we have cash assets, that are cash on hand, the time deposits, the share value of the farmer, we can include over here. We can mention the quantity and then value. And then we have, the total value of assets. So opening inventory value, closing inventory value, net change. Closing inventory minus opening inventory, right? So whether the farmer condition is very good or not, we can easily find out. Right, now we have questions for review. If you understood the lecture properly, enough, then you'll be able to give me the answers for first, define what is farm inventory, define replacement cost. You should be able to define in just two lines, farm inventory, right? Then explain income capitalization method you should know what is income capitalization why it is useful and why we are using it for land right 
then enlist the methods of valuing assets in a farm inventory what are the methods we have seen we have seen six methods right right from net selling price to income capitalization method we have to discuss your endless list and then discuss the procedure of farm inventory analysis simple last step one two repeat the same step and then find the net change right so with this we'll end this chapter hope uh, you have understood what is farm inventory and most importantly you have understood what is the importance of valuation of a farm asset right you should also know what is depreciable asset and non depreciable assets and you should be knowing some key concepts like what is replacement cost and what is income capitalization hope you have enjoyed this and hope you are taking all the precautionary measures you are staying safe we are also staying safe and uh, we'll be meeting you soon thank you thank you for your patience